don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So yesterday morning, Friday morning, and while Ian and I were sat um, over breakfast having coffee and chatting as you do when you first wake up and you're trying to get your brain to work. <laughs> While we we're chatting, I found myself doodling on the back of a notepad and the little doodle that I did um, has turned into something a little bit different. So I'll turn over to my overhead camera and show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so this was the notepad and on the back, while we were chatting, um, I ended up doodling this little character. Now, it's reminiscent of a few bits and pieces that I've done in the past. Some other characters that I've seen, Ian also said it reminds him from the character from the young boy from Where the Wild Things Are. But also I've seen other kind of sculptures and stuff with a similar kind of theme to it. But it just, I was just doodling while we were chatting and talking about something. Um, but because in the past I've done a couple of other um, characters similar, but not quite to this, I thought I would explore this a little bit further. So um, yesterday, while um, I was waiting for other things to happen, or the washing machine, all that kind of thing, as you do, uh, I grabbed um, a tracing paper pad and I started to draw bits and pieces, um, the body and that kind of stuff, on some tracing paper. Um, I got uh, an eraser and I also got my um, Faber-Castell black pit pen, which is the small one, which has got a nice kind of nib to it. Um, and I ended up drawing out um, on the tracing paper, first in the paper, I ended up drawing a different body with the panel for the face to go into. Um, I ended up drawing some different types of eyes, wings, a crown, which eventually ended up turning into that. So you can see how you start to build up your bits and pieces and then a pair of wings don't forget that's what the character looked like originally. All on tracing paper. And then what I did was I scanned them all into my computer um, and converted them all into vector graphics so that I could manipulate and change and do what I wanted with them. Um, and in the end, I created that. Um, <clears throat> So that was kind of like the components that I wanted to do. I didn't particularly want to put a mouth and a nose in there because the original character only had eyes to like a little letterbox. But I thought, well, if I give myself plenty of room to put my own mouth in and my own nose, then you can change, pretty much change the expression and the intent of the character, depending on what you're feeling and what you want to do. Um, I also did kind of like the traditional Dunn's cap version, but that never ended up making the final cut. I actually ended up doing a, a spiky one first and then changed it a little bit to more of a cone shape, but that never kind of made it through. Sometimes they don't, it's like those eyes. Those eyes were just a bit too weird for what I wanted. Um, normally I do things a little bit bigger and then scale them down. <laughs> See, but the beauty about this is you, you can flip them over and do left and right, which is why um, there's only one wing because what I ended up doing is flipping it over and creating two from different sides. So that's how I created this particular character. So what I wanted to do was to create an art journal page using this character. Now because of the way I've done it, I could either print this onto pattern paper or onto text paper um, to create texture or what I did do in the end is I put it all together to create one particular image. So I put the wings together, I put the crown on, then I printed that off, and then I started to colour it in. Now, while I was actually doing that, um, I did fill, I've already done it, and this is the final, a lot smaller, obviously, because I'm working on a smaller um, art journal page. Uh, that's the other beauty of doing things in the computer is you can manipulate the size as well. So while I was doing this, um, I actually did put my camera on um, to show how I 
coloured in. So a bit of a time lapse. So I'll put those bits of footage in here now. So this is the bit where I'm colouring in. Um, obviously I did it quickly. Just You can see me doing the wings um, and then you'll see me doing the crown. And I'm using uh, my Letraset Pro markers. Not Copic markers, but the Letraset Pro markers. Um, these are what I originally learnt to colour with um, because back in the day I could not afford Copic markers. These are a lot cheaper. Um, and then once I'd coloured that in using those Pro markers, um, I then started to cut it out. So as you can see, um, using a pair of scissors, I started to cut out the shape. Um, using a big pair of scissors, I really should have used some smaller ones, which I did eventually end up going and grabbing a pair of small scissors to finish and do all the little fiddly bits. Um, so I cut the shape out and then I went round the outside of the image using um, shabby shutters distress marker. So just to hide those white raw edges and any um, imperfections in the cutting out that I might have done because obviously, you know, we've all got shaky hands and that kind of stuff. Um, so there you go. So that was how I put together my little character. Um, now obviously um, I can make this available if people are interested as a digi download. I can also make the um, individual components available as a digi download or I could just make this a coloured version or just a white version for you to colour in um, or I could just do this so you can or the, the components so you can arrange the wings and change the the crown or whatever if you want to if you're interested in doing me doing that as a digi download then let me know because it won't really take long just to put the bits and pieces together in a digi download and get it on the website so leave me a um, comment in the comment section below the video and just say, you know, yes, please, I would love to have that as a digi download set and I'll do it for you. Um, and I'll obviously mention a bit later on about it. So now that I've got my character all cut out, um, all coloured in, I'm ready to do uh, use that as the focal point for an art journal page. So I don't have a um, Dilusions journal anymore because I finished it so I'm going to have to create a new journal so what I've done is I've created um, an 8 by 8 page with an inch flap I'll explain what that's for um, in a little while so the page is going to be 8 inches by 8 inches now this will fit just because wingtip to wingtip it's just about 8 inches and height wise what have we got height wise? So from the bobble on his crown down to his foot, it's about five and a half inches. So in new money, that's about 14 centimeters from tip to tip. We've got about 19 and a half. So 14 and a half to about 19 and a half. And that for a focal point is just perfect. So I'm gonna put him to one side or her, I suppose kind of non-gender specific um, and this is the page that I'm going to work on let me just zoom out a little bit just a tad there we go so I've got a bit of room to work in now looking at the colors of the character obviously there's a lot of green so what I've done is I've gone into my Americana deco art collection and I've pulled out three greens which I think um, will complement the colors of the character so I've got avocado desert cactus um, dessert cactus and olive green doesn't really look like an olive green to me it's far too bright but hey ho um, yellow wise I've pulled four different yellows out of the collection there we are so we've got light buttermilk which is a very 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 light kind of yellow then we've got sunny day uh, and then I've got bright yellow and then I've got yellow ochre, a uh, true ochre, which I like to use because it's kind of like a brownie, it's kind of like a toffee coloured, it's kind of caramelly kind of colour, um, which adds a little bit of neutrality to it. Now, with the character, there's kind of dusky pink bobbles, dusky pink bits on the socks, and the buttons are kind of dusky pink as well. 
So, to add a little pop of colour, I've also got Bright Salmon. So, those are the colours. Let me just bring those in as a complete row, if you like. Now, there's no white and there's no black, so um, I will probably, if I'm going to use um, any darker colours I will, or lighter colours, I will probably use those two. I'll probably use the buttermilk and the avocado because those are the lightest and the darkest out of the entire lot. So if I want high light, if I want low light, I will probably use those two and keep the colour scheme as it is. So let's just bring all those lovely colours in and put them bottoms up so you can see them all en masse. There you go. So if I do that, that kind of matches, doesn't it? It's a nice kind of little colour palette for the project. Okay, and that's what I like to do. I like to do, if I'm doing a colouring in project like that, I'll colour it and then I'll go and find the nearest colours that I'm going to work with. So, art journal page, I'm going to put a bit of background texture in first of all. So I've got some book text and I've got this roll of Tim Holtz collage paper. This is, it says Halloween on it, but it's kind of lace and florally. Um, never been used. I think this was sent to me in Happy Mail a while ago. Um, because I'm not really a lace fan, it got put into my tissue drawer um, and that's where it stayed. So, but there's music on there and there's text and there's a little bit of floral. Like I said, not all that keen on the lace aspect, but what I think I will do is I will just tear a strip off. There we go. And then I'm going to just tear that lace bit out because, you know, That should do it actually. And then what I'll do is I'll just fold that gently, roll it up, and then I'll just pop that into the center there so that I can maybe use it a different day. Right, let's just pop those away. Get them out of the way so I'm not knocking it over. All right, so we've got that, we've got that. I need some matte medium. Got a little bit left in this tub. I really do need to go and get some more. Before I do, before I start splashing matte medium around, I want to change my green cutting mat to a white clean one. So I'll be right back once I've done that. Okay, this is one of those non-stick um, heat resistant mats from I can't remember where I got this from, but Ranger sell them. Anyway, they're ubiquitous, they're all over the place. Right, so I've got a dictionary page. What we've got on there? We've got Kiss and we've got King, all on the same page. Well, hey, what more do you want? <laughs> and King. Mm. Right, okay, Kind, Kindergarten, Kindle, Kindred, Kinetic, Kilt, like it, Kind and Kilo. Whatever. Whatever. So what I'm going to do is I will just tear some strips. Just three, I think, will do. There we go. So we'll just have three pieces. And I'm going to follow kind of like the rule of three. So we'll stick that there. And we'll stick that one there. And we'll stick... Maybe that's a bit too big. Yeah, stick that one there. Let's just reduce the size a little bit because they can be a bit overpowering. Right, so okay, that should do. I'm not particularly 100% bothered about um, bubbles and creases and that kind of stuff. I could use ordinary kind of Pritt stick, but I need to use up just the last remnants of this matte medium and I know I will pay for this afterwards because I haven't got gloves on and I've got no barrier cream 
so I will pay for it for sure right so the art journal page that I'm working on is um, watercolour cardstock um, and it's from it's a Dela Rowney pad Ooh, there we go that's the one and it is 420 millimeters by 293 which makes it a three size European a three or in metric a3 size which is 16 and a half by 11.7 inches 250 GSM 169 pound it's the mixed media pad the purple one this is my preferred paper for working on I buy it in A4 pads A3 pads and whatever pads I can get my hands on whenever I see it it's inexpensive and it's a good stuff great for making journals with he says throwing that away okay so the last bit well I say the last bit the third bit this may end up being a fairly long video but I make no apologies because you know it's Saturday afternoon and you know what else have you got to do on a Saturday afternoon I ask you then just play about with glue and paper okay so visual triangle let's bring in some of that tissue so we'll have a piece of that now bearing in mind a lot of this actually is going to disappear under layers of paint so don't get bent out of shape with trying to make it you know perfect cuts and perfect rips and all this kind of stuff um, because you know it don't really matter so I'll put some of that down there so we'll have a bit of that text there and we'll just go back over with the matte medium that just seals it down and pops it into place and then we'll get another piece of our here so again mirror that triangle and I'm going to just bring it over the edge a little bit onto my crease there so glue that down okay because that's going to be my binding flap if you'll pardon the expression and then we'll have that other piece up here fairly large-ish I'm not bothered about it being upside down I'm bothered about it being upside down yeah I am a little bit what was I saying about don't get bent out of shape about making sure it's perfect oh, and then he goes and does it right let's stick that there there we go okay so we've got our little basis so I can have a quick tidy up, put the matte medium away, wash the brush and then I will be right back. Alrighty then, so we're dry. It's buckled a little bit but you know, me, occupational hazard. So I've got matte medium down over that page there which will kind of act like a little bit of um, resistance when you put some paint on. Um, where the areas are that there is no matte medium it will soak into the paper straight away where there is matte medium on the surface of the paper um, it will act as a kind of resist and won't react in the same way I do want the paint to react in the same way so I'm going to go over the entire page with clear gesso just to give me a kind of even working surface where I know how the paint that I'm going to put on in a second is going to react or it will react in a uniform way and not give me any strange surprises so that's why I'm adding the gesso 
um, and I'm adding clear gesso rather than white gesso only because I don't particularly want to lose a lot of that detail from the texture of the papers that are in the background. No other reason whatsoever, which so ever. Okay, so page has now got clear gesso all over it. I shall go and wash the brush and then I'll be right back. Okay, so the gesso is now dry and because no pod is perfect, um, there may be some areas that, um, that I have missed because, you know, I'm only human of flesh and blood I made. Right, so I'm going to start adding some paint down onto the surface now. So um, I'm going to start off with the lighter colours. So I'm going to start off with the buttermilk. So I'll give it a shake and I'm going to be using um, a wet wipe just because I want to be able to move the paint around. So let's just pop the lid, give it a shake just to make sure the binder is mixed in and then it's not a soaking wet wipe, it's just barely wet. Um, baby wipe, really, as opposed to, you know, something which is, you can actually wring it out. So I'm going to start just adding bits of colour just by swiping it across the page. Now this is the reason why I didn't want to add um, any white gesso because I knew this was going to kind of like go into the background a bit as soon as I started adding the colour. And because the buttermilk is very, very light, you know, it kind of disappears on its own into the background. So now I'm going to bring in the next darker yellow colour, which is the sunny day, and grab some of that using the same cloth. I'm just going to pick that up and I'm going to start manoeuvring that around the page and going over some of the areas where I've already been and by no means is this the final thing. I will probably end up adding more of the buttermilk and just blending it all out using the wet wipe. So I'll take some more. I was get into the habit of shaking the paints before I pick them up, before I use them. There we go. So because it's still kind of wet, you can still blend those colours. So if it appears too dark, then blend it away. If it's too light, darken it. Don't be afraid just to manoeuvre and play. There we go. Okay, so kind of like that. So I'll just give that a wipe up. And before it dries, let's add in some of that true ochre. So I'll give that a shake. Just get a little bit, and I'm going to use the same wet wipe, just move it to a different area, not because of any other reason than I'm just being cheap. Frugal, if you like. There we go. And just start blending that little darker colour in. Just go around in little circles. Just pick up a little bit and then go around. Then move to a clean spot and then just lift a little that colour back off again. Then flip back to the darkers. So it all just blends together. 
Okay, I'm going to leave that a little bit down there. That'll do for that. Let's give that a quick swipe over. Okay, that just takes off the majority. Right, now I'm going to bring in some of the green. So this is the dessert cactus. And then clean cloth. Because the other one's a bit grungy now. I've got paint all over my fingers, but you know. Occupational hazard. And now we'll start adding some of that green. So dab, swirl. Whichever you like. Of course, you could just use your fingers as so many people do. There we go. I'll just go around just dabbing. Okay, so just lift a bit of that there. Maybe just bring that yellow wet white back in. I'm throwing it away. Still got a little bit on, which just helps to kind of blend the colours a little. There we go. Just nice and gentle. Here we go. Nice kind of like motley effect. Lovely, so I want to get that dry. Okay, so we've got that background nice and dry. So what I want to do, just because I've got one of my new stencils, so this is the Random Rocks. So what I want to do, I'm just going to bring that in from the corner up there. And I've got this olive green paint. So I'll just give it a shake. Ooh. Put a little bob on the table. And then I've got a cosmetic sponge. So I'm just gonna load that paint up into the sponge. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of that green kind of texture just over there in the corner. Okay, then turn it round into the corner again. In fact, let's just go around in swirls. It might be easier than dabbing. Do it in all four corners just to create a kind of nice border effect. I've gone over a little bit too far on that side, but never mind. A bit more paint. So if you're wondering about this sponge. It's a full circle, and all I do is cut it into quarters and then into eighths. Okay, so we've got that in the corners there in that green. So that's the random rocks, which is new for this month. And then I've got the tunnel stencil, again, new for this month. So There we go. So let's just bring in our character. I'm going to pop him at a little bit of an angle there, and I want the tunnel to 
to just kind of like radiate from around the head there. So that will do. And I'm going to use the lighter colour, the light buttermilk. So let's just add some of that to the table. And I want another piece of sponge, clean piece. So I've just got a quarter there, so I'll just cut that in half. So I'm going to hold that down, load up the sponge, don't mind if I get a little bit of green in there, and then I'm going to start in the middle, I'm just going to work my way kind of out. I don't want it to be too kind of like in your face. Want it to be a kind of subtle sort of halo. Let's just have a little bit more. He says. That's it. Move them all the way around. course where I'm going around in circles it will collect kind of like in the edges the paint will collect in the edges but I don't mind that okay yes yes like 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 I nearly burst into a well-known burger joint catchphrase. Okay. Okay, that is totally dry. Okay, so let's bring in a little character. Ha <laughs> Love it. Okay, so now we're going to stick him down. Now, before I do that, I just want to show you something. Oh. So, before starting doing the filming, I did scan the coloured version. So that's the coloured version, which obviously it's a little bit lighter. It's only because I lightened up the print a little bit. But also, there's also the black and white version for colouring in. So this is the original, just to prove it. There's the colouring on the back. <laughs> so I'm going to stick him down on there. Smidge, by the way. Um, that's what I decided to name the character, Smidge. Uh, glue, what are we going to use? Shall we use a glue stick or shall we use wet glue? Let's use a dry glue stick. Um, yeah, we'll use an Elmer's. Alright, so, and a bit of... We've got some scrap paper somewhere. Yes, that will do. A piece of scrap paper. A bit of scratch for smidge. What's oh, a new stick. Look at that. I'm looking around for a glue stick. And there's one of them purple ones right in front of me. Duh. Okay, so... Just work outwards so from the inside of the print or the character outwards. That's just to stop the glue from smushing underneath onto the front. No other reason. Okay, so let's flip him over of that piece of paper and then just before I stick it down about there I think just get a piece of kitchen towel and then I'm going to smooth it down Ha 
like it, like it a lot. Okay, so I'm going to leave that a couple of seconds just to set and grab, just to hold, and then I'll be back. Okay, so that's just had a few minutes just to kind of grab. So what I want to do is just create a few kind of little shadows underneath. So this is a Stabilo All pencil, black one. And I've got a little bit of water somewhere. Just a tiny, tiny bit. And I've got a brush. So I'm going to just wet the brush and just pick up, just do a watercolour pencil. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of water. So I don't want it to be too, I don't want it to be too dark and I don't want it to be So you can't see it, so I'm just going to kind of like add a little bit of shadow. Try not to catch the paper, that's the trick. But it is, like I said, it's watercolour, so it will kind of like dissipate. I'm not trying to add any grounding because I don't really want it to look like ground. I just want to create a little bit of depth and shadow. Always kind of difficult, but there we go. I'm just adding a little bit of you can use your finger. There you go. The tissue just to lift a few areas. If it gets a bit too dark. It's not necessarily about control, it's more about just not overdoing it. You don't want it too dark and you don't want it to look like a, a huge, great big like computerised drop shadow that you sometimes see. But just a little bit of shadow underneath. There we go. This will die back lighter as well, so I'm probably agonising over nothing. So it will probably disappear almost entirely. Well, let's see. There we go. That didn't take long to dry. And it's not completely disappeared, so you have got some shadow under the wings and just there, which I think is okay. Right, so I want to just add a little bit of a darker frame around the page. So I'm just grabbing some vintage photo, ink blending foam, and I'm just working the ink out first and then I'm just going to come in and catch the edge. Just to kind of frame it. I'm going to go all the way around including that flap. That's going to be my binding flap when I finally get around to creating the journal that this is going to go into. There we go. I'm just going to keep on going until I'm kind of like happy with the depth of that border all the way around. Go a bit heavier on that flap because it's not really going anywhere. Okay, I'm liking that. So, what I want to do now is I want to have a quick tidy up, get rid of all this distress ink on here, get that cleaned off, and then I'll be right back and then we'll be ready to add a little quote for the page. So, I'll see you in a little while. 
Okay, so ready to add my quote and my phrase to the page. So I've printed off on the computer, everyone deserves the chance to fly, which is a line from, yes, all together now, Defying Gravity from Wicked. Yes, it's what Elphaba sings to um, Galinda after they've had their argument and she decides to leave to go on her own. Defying Gravity, that's it. So everyone deserves the chance to fly. So I'm just going to quickly cut off. Now I was going to do this um, do some hand lettering but like everybody else I'm rather nervous about if you pardon the expression cocking it up um, and ruining the page so instead I thought well what I will do um, is I will print out the slogan on a piece of cardstock the next best thing this is um, a font called Mikey Hand which actually is my own handwriting. I learnt how to create my own font a while ago when I did, uh, when I made some stamps, I did a, some journaling phrases and words stop for indigo blue. So I designed my own font and then installed it on my computer. So now whenever I want any of my own handwriting, I can cheat. <laughs> but come on. In all fairness, it is still my handwriting, it is still my hand. It's just printed rather than handwritten. And it did take me a long time <laughs> to, to develop the font. So, you know, I put the work in beforehand. See, I've got that the wrong way around, you see. I would have completely cocked that up. Messed it up. There we go. I think I'm going to put that like that. That will work well for me. Okay, so first things first then, let's just add a little bit of grungy edging. So I'm not sure how long this has taken me so far. Obviously it's taken me a lot longer to do this then it does for you to sit and watch it because you're watching the full edited version but I know I started this just before lunch no it's only half past one there you go so so far it's taken me an hour and a half to get to this stage so I've no idea how long it has been for you watching it because like I said you're watching the edited version You're not not the full length version there we go because the full length version would have started yesterday morning <laughs> Okay, so we've gone round each of those. It says throwing the foam across the desk. Okay, so glue stick again, I think. There it is. Where's my scratch paper? I'll just use that. That will do. So perhaps I ought to just lay them back out again dry. So I can see where they are, just pick them up from. So everyone, or should we just do it? See, I've changed my mind again. Everyone deserves the chance to fly. There we go. Let's do it like that instead. Eh? What do you reckon? No, <laughs> I think I prefer doing it 
like that. Just to move those a little bit more to there. In the grand scheme of things, you know, it, it doesn't really matter that much. So again, probably agonising about stuff that really don't matter. Now then, I did treat myself to some tweezers the other day. Look at these fabulous wooden handled ones. Very, very inexpensive. Let's stick that there. But these are the ones that you have to push together to open and then it grips without you having to do anything. So let's do everyone this time. mirrored up there I know tweezers are fabulous aren't they so let's stick it down to the paper now there we go up you come. So everyone I know I've forgotten to talk again. I'm getting I'm concentrating so hard I'm forgetting to talk. But I'm sure you'll forgive me. to use that phrase from Wicked. We saw it a couple of years ago at the Apollo Theatre in London and it was brilliant. The theatre was horrible though, it was way 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 too hot because there's no air conditioning and it was midsummer. <laughs> but the musical itself was amazing. Okay, I'm just going to quickly just add some splashes. Don't mind if a few go on the wings. Yes. Just a few little ones. And then just grab that, that, that. Let's get some love the water. I'm going to try and just clean the brush without having to go. I haven't got my water pot with me. So I'm trying to be, I know, I'm just being lazy. I've been to the bathroom twice and I don't really want to go back again. Um, okay, that'll do. Okay. So where's that buttermilk gone? So let's do that and then Drop a buttermilk, a lot of water, and let's have some lighter ones, two, don't mind it if some actually get on the main character, it just helps to integrate the entire page. Right, so that's what it looks like. Let me just quickly get it dried and then I'll be back and we'll do the finishing touches. I need to clear up first. Ugh, cat bad mess. Okay, so that's dry. The splatters are all dry, everything's in place. So the only thing I didn't do was add some of that bright salmon 
which is the pink in the socks and the buttons and in the, the crown. I didn't add any of that into the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a little bit of that paint. There we go. And I'm going to just load up a little bit on that sponge. This actually works better with the cut and dry or if you've got some the indigo blue fat foam because it works just as well. Take your stamp and just dab it onto the stamp. Because a lot of people don't realise you can actually use paint for stamping. And then I'm just going to add just a little bit. that text just subtly around the page. And that's it. I'm not going to do any more, but of course you must remember to clean your stamp immediately because if you let the acrylic paint dry on it you'll ruin it. So if you're going to use paint for stamping don't say I didn't warn you. There you go. Clean as a whistle. Okay so now that's done, I've got paint on there. Oh, go away. Go away, paint. Right, so, done that, done that, done that. So we've got those little highlights of the pink, the salmon, just in that background. So all I have to do now is just sign it and date it. And today, of course, is a Saturday, the 31st of July. So, 31st of the 7th. 21. So there you go. So that is my art journal page. Loose leaf art journal page for a journal I have not yet created. <laughs> but that's for another video. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create A, the character, and B, the art journal page for him to sit on. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. For more videos like this one, I've forgotten my normal spiel. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> anyway, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe by clicking that button at the end of the video. And there you go. I will see you all again very, very soon. I need to go for a lie down or at least have another cup of coffee. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.